there's a lot of camaraderie in this industry. There's a lot of like, we're in this together. It is a small industry, a small, big industry is what I would call it. Excellent, excellent uh, definition of that, I think. <laughs> the whole knowledge of, of this sector, everything is so inextricably linked um, to sort of travel and, and short-term rentals yeah. related to, to politics or related to sport or related to, you know, the economy. <laughs> Hello, Paul Stevens, my friend. I haven't seen you since Vegas. This is so love. What a lovely surprise to have you on the podcast today. We were just talking about how this isn't this isn't your first podcast. Um, it isn't mine. We're gonna have some fun today. I what I love about our podcast is it's like crazy authentic. So it's just like two friends talking today. And I would love to know what the heck is up with Paul Stevens, my friend. Firstly, firstly, <laughs> let me just make sure that people know who you are. Because Jamie Lane yelled at me the other day. He was like, you forgot to introduce me. And I was like, Jamie, I just <laughs> assumed everyone knew who you were. <laughs> so before I make that assumption, folks, uh, again, why are you in for a treat today is that we are talking to Paul Stevens, the editor of Short Term Rentals. I think most of you probably are aware of that publication and are following it, um, which is part of international hospitality media. Um, Paul, you've been in this business for a while, but I don't know your origin story. I don't know what in the heck possessed you, or maybe somebody pulled you into this world. Tell me, how did you get involved in this crazy business? Um, no, well, firstly, really good to um, see you again, Mariah. I mean, Vegas, I, I don't really know. It doesn't feel like uh, what, five, six months ago since. Well, you're probably glad, actually, that we're turning the tables on on, the, on this interview as well. But, oh, this, uh, is, this is a very good point you bring up. Usually Paul is interviewing people and now he's in the hot seat. He's gonna I've, have I've, I've, pre I've prepared my face and everything and the lighting just specially for you as well. <laughs> um, no, yes. Um, so I'm editor of a website called Short Term Rentals, and that's rentals with a Z. I mean, don't don't ask me why why it's the Z, but it's it's our um, USP, I guess. And um, yes, we're part of um, International Hospitality Media Group, which we basically have four B two B websites in hospitality and real estate. And I think your uh, viewers will be most familiar with Short Term Rentals. But then we also go into um, boutique hotels or boutique hotel news, um, service departments or service department news, and um, like urban living. So pretty much everything else, um, urban living news. So yeah, short-term rentals. I was just thinking about it. And actually, <laughs> I've been in the industry now for like four and a half years or something, Dang, which that's a long has, time. has flown by in, in a, I mean, this has been a complete roller case for a couple of years. And you look back that was late 2018 um and at that at that time of course i had experience booking short-term rentals in the new airbnb was but since then you know the whole knowledge of this industry has has increased the investments increased in the sector um we've had you know we've sort of had to become almost experts talking about brexit covid um Ukraine wars, financial crises. Um, so it's very much, you know, you have to stray from your comfort zone with this job. But um, it's um, well, I'm, I'm very happy to, to be in this industry and happy to be here with you today. Oh, you know what? The else I forgot to warn our listeners about is that you just have a lovely. I mean, for me as a terrible American, I just love listening to you talk and like <laughs> the Z versus a Z. It's this is fabulous, Paul. Um, we we yeah. still say Gen Z though, don't we? I I, I think it's funny in in Gen UK Z. like yeah. people people don't really say Gen Z. That's just something that occurred to me anyway. This is well. Firstly, I think let's make this happen. Gen Z, <laughs> I'm gonna start using it. <laughs> I just yeah, I like I try to like you know just ingrain myself into who the culture of whomever I'm speaking to. So if I start talking with an accent, I apologize in advance. No, no, no. We we love all accents. <laughs> it's it's. I I love meeting people from all over the world. This is this is the best part of the job for me. 
Oh my gosh. Well, and this is the best part, I think, yeah, of like the advantage you have is that you are taking a global view on the short-term rental industry. And I love what you just brought up, right? Which is that like, you know, you're you're trying to report on something very, very specific, which is short-term rentals. Um, however, there's quite a lot of big macro things happening, including a war in Ukraine um, and Brexit and COVID that, that impact what's happening in the short-term rental business. And hey, four years makes you an OG, I'd say, in this case. <laughs> oh, well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a first for me, so I'll, I'll take that from you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's... It's funny how, you know, whatever is is news is is something that, you know, we're covering travel and hospitality, but whole the whole knowledge of of this sector, everything is so inexplicably linked to inextricably linked, um, to sort of travel and, and short term rentals yeah. related to to politics or related to sport or related to you know the economy, um, and all sorts of tensions as well so but lots of lots of opportunities within the market and I think there are some fantastic people that, that I, I've met throughout the last couple of years doing doing amazing things and um, it's great when you, you can be on platforms like this and really really highlight some of the, the innovators and people making a difference oh my gosh I love that well that was it's funny because it's almost like you made kind of known where my brain was going because I was like, I was like, what, what about this particular industry is exciting for you? But, and I think you bring up a really good point, right? Which is that you're out there sort of, you know, getting the beat, getting the pulse and you're able to, you know, celebrate the innovation that's been happening in the industry. Uh, com completely. I, I love, this industry i love like the diversity of people that you meet um you know what we talk about with say you know issues perhaps in in, in wider circles like we see maybe not so many women in in senior positions or right. um so much diversity in panels or or you know you see so many different ages as well and i think the short term rental industry is sort of ahead of the curve from what i've seen there's obviously still a long way to go with with some of the issues as well, but yeah. this is an industry that's really rich. Um, everyone gets along pretty well, e even competitors. I think um, on on the whole, <laughs> maybe maybe not in, in every sense, but um, you get, you go along to these events and it's just oh, yeah. crazy how everyone knows each other or you know someone first through through LinkedIn and then you meet each other and it's like your best friends already <laughs> and. Um, it's um yeah it's, it's an industry i love being part of and and it's evolving so quickly all the time which makes yeah. puts us as as journalists and people in the media in a really good position to um, educate or inform or yeah just just let everyone know what's happening in, in wider short-term mental spectrum i love that yeah i mean we certainly rely on you as a news source to understand sort of what's happening. And it, it is very easy to get sort of myopically focused on your own little market or your own little world. Um, and, you know, again, to take maybe like more of a nationalistic approach, right? Like what's happening in the US? And then it's like, oh, right, there's all this other stuff happening across the globe. And yes, let's celebrate that. You're right. There's a lot of camaraderie in this industry. There's a lot of like, we're in this together. It is a small industry. A small big industry is what I would call it because it's it always I always am laughing as a new <laughs> excellent excellent uh, definition of that I think <laughs> a small big world <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know I think um, you know I'm, I'm not here to do sort of shameless plugs but I I, I love no, please what do you, you we got, love a shameless plug I, I I love what you guys are doing at Air DNA and oh, just well. sort of especially if you that, us. go ahead yeah <laughs> but the, the the data that you're putting out and you know the reports your, your your whole team is doing some fantastic work that makes life for us sometimes quite easy as as editors and for, for us just to see the data that's happening in in europe and what, what markets are performing well or where occupancy abr are the comparison mm -hmm. with 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 the US markets and, and elsewhere as well. I know if I'm writing a story about what's happening in a particular country or 
um, a, a market, then I can come to you. And yeah, I appreciate you know, the work that you're doing as well as, well as all the other data providers and um, people that are supporting us and on our stories. Mm, this is a very, well, thank you. Firstly, again, definitely if it's a shameless plug about me, please do it. <laughs> We, you weren't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I was. I thought it was about. It was going to be about you, but we're we're going to get to that. This is. Um, but I, one of the things that sort of just sparked something for me in that is like we make a great team, right? Because you're out there, and like anecdotal is too little of a word, right? But you're out there, sort of like feeling things out. Like, what am I hearing on the street? What are people telling me? You know, you're collecting your own type of data, like qual data, let's call it qualitative data around what's happening in the business. And then the reason we make a good team is then you can sort of validate and verify some of that, as many journalists do, with our quantitative data. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So that's cool. Oh, geez. Yeah. I'm... Perfect team. To, perfect team. Absolutely. No, I, I, love, I love the work you, you guys are doing. Well, let's, well, thank you. And we love the work that you're doing. I, and I want to talk a little bit about, again, like I was like, Paul, Paul Stevens knows what's up in this business. <laughs> so what has been the biggest change that has maybe like sort of struck you in the last year? Cause I've been in this business for 18 months. And so I'm definitely a noob. Um, the tables are turned <laughs> Paul. I'm the noob. Um, and I am like, wow, things changed a lot for me in 18 months. So what's your perspective on what's the biggest, what's the biggest difference this year? It, it's probably hard to identify one thing. We, we cover like the whole breadth of news that you'll see. You'll see um, M&A and investment. You'll see, yes. you know, we, we cover regulations. We cover or any, any type of legislation, to be fair. Um, any supplier or, or techno um, technology, property management stories. Yeah. I think the investment landscape is, is very interesting as well because I, I'll probably say this with the other trends, is that it's not maybe been a big shift, but it's just a continuation of, of a lot of things. And I think on the investment side, from, from the stuff that I, I'm hearing and Sometimes we, we actually don't always get all the news until it comes out or there, there's an embargo on it. But right, um, right. There's, there's plenty of, of M&A happening all, all the time in, in the sector as well. And, and it doesn't even tend to necessarily um, refer to just one section of the industry. It could be, I mean, we see property managers of all sorts um, raising capital Definitely. at the moment. We see, you know, tech providers, people who are innovating and providing um, new solutions to the market, particularly in the AI or, or chat GPT. Uh, so we're seeing um, investment really across across the sphere. And something we're, we're in, really interested in at the moment is sort of the, I don't even know if you can call it alternative types of lodging at the moment. Mm, but I know I in, in Air DNA that you've talked about unique types of uh, accommodation performing well. We're looking at um, holiday parks or, hol or or camping, glamping type companies, which are raising right. so much um, money now in, in, in the fact that it raises, it raises a lot of ideas for us. And we're seeing people again, wanting to escape back to nature, that's probably something that has continued um, from the pandemic yeah. when we were um, more restricted in the sorts of travel um, that we could do. Although I think the urban players are starting to raise um, again, and, and that the m and is, is also um, quite, quite evident from that respect. But on, on, an, on the other side, something that we're always covering on short-term rentals is, is the regulatory landscape as well. Right. And maybe we see this differently to what is seen in the, in the States. But um, you know, if, if you weren't already covering it, but um, the European Commission is, yes. is going through this, this period of, I think it's 27 um, EU member states who it, it's going through a couple of stages. But um, I think we're moving closer to a more uniform uh, version of, of regulations across these states and really we're just looking at what the the impact um, is going to be but um, I think this is a, a, sec a sector that um, is, is in an 
in a bit of an inflection point right now. We're just waiting yeah. to see what, what's going to happen with that. I, I love that description of it. So yeah, I think like just like taking it from the top, right? Like you hit um, so many core, you know, sort of parts of what is changing and why we're in an inflection point, right? Which is, you know, the M&A and just sort of the consolidation of what was, you know, historically a little bit of a fragmented business, right? Yeah. Um, which is super, yeah. super interesting. And definitely demarking and maturation of the industry as well. Um, and then talking about that technology component, right, where people are now um, looking at what what it, what the robots can do. We're all scared about what the robots can do. Well, okay, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm old. We talk about that a lot. Well, um, so I'm a little frightened by the robots. Um, but, you know, exactly that, right? Like what, what can technology do to improve the efficiency in this business? Um, and then the changes in just like, the consumer behavior, right? The consumer being travelers and how, you know, their desires have changed, what, you know, we can shed from COVID that we will, you know, kind of go back to quote unquote normal, like urban travel. And, you know, we're all ready to go back to cities and what we're also holding on to from COVID and what we really appreciated maybe about how we adjusted our travel behavior during COVID, right? I spent, I spent a lot more time. <laughs> in the woods. Um, I do live in a state, Colorado, where there is a lot of woods. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, yes, that regulation piece. And I think what's so, so valuable about what you're doing is that people need to understand like what is happening on a macro level as well as a micro level. Um, super fascinating. And I, I want to know more from you about the European Commission, because, you know, I was talking to a, a fellow the other day about this and, you know, he was saying what is nice about he's in Arizona, the state. And he said, one of the things that's nice about that is they actually have blanket rules for the state. Mm. So he's like, it just makes it a little easier for people when it's when the rules are so fragmented is really hard to understand. Conversely, when the rules are fragmented, everybody feels like they are doing what's best for their little tiny county city state. Absolutely. And I think I think you've hit the nail on the head, particularly in the, in the first thing that you're saying, when a lot of these those trends that were popping up during COVID. And I remember thinking, you know, in, in those early days of COVID, I mean, we, we kind of thought, how are we going to cover the industry? What is what is the news going to be like? Is it going to be this spate of um, liquidations, administrations, job cuts? And there, there was that to be fair as well. But um, uh, some of those trends that we're starting to see, the, 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 um, move for more domestic travel, um, the, the growth in supply, a, a lot of these things are still happening as well. But at the yeah. same time, the world is a very different place as well to to pre-COVID, and it doesn't need me to, to say that as well. But you know, the shifts that we're seeing in the in in data, what, what you're doing at AirDNA, um, in technology and AI, I'm really interested. To we just hosted a, a webinar this week on predictive hospitality yes. uh, and looking at you know, what sort of data are people going to be looking at moving forward? What's going to be useful for them? And you can have past looking data, you can have forward looking data. And, and really, I mean, I was educating myself during this session in, in particular, but um, there, there's a lot of interesting things happening there and, and the evolution is happening all the time. I think sort of to answer your your the second part of the um, the question as well. well. Firstly, kudos for you for remembering. I don't know. If you remember. <laughs> no, it was um, the 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 regulatory the, the regulations at the moment yeah. in, in the European Commission. Um, it it has to go through so many stages and sort of and lots of different approvals and, and votes. So. Uh, we're very much waiting to see. I think the the rules, to my knowledge, have been approved, and um, there there is a sense sometimes like there is a hostility towards short term rentals in certain markets across Europe. Uh, but mm. the, the, very much the consensus is that the industry does not oppose regulations, um, right. you know, of any kind. But it has to be. Um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, proportional, proportional. Ooh, to, that's a good one. You know, to, to all sorts of accommodation types as well. And and for a, an industry segment that has done so well during COVID and 
supported key workers, supported groups, mm. supported families, corporate travellers. This is an industry that deserves respect. And, you know, I just hope that whatever is the result of this um, in Europe, that the, 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 the industry is, is respected and it can keep, can keep on its growth trajectory. That was, wow, I love that. That was so well said. It's almost, <laughs> it's almost like you write things that sound good for a living. Um. <laughs> well, it's, um, you know, I, th I think sort of the perception could be that you're, um, and this isn't in, in my words, but people can see you as some sort of, uh, well, you call it an OG or a, an expert of some sort. <laughs> that, that isn't how I see it at all, but it's just someone who can, I oversee really what's happening in, in yeah. the industry and your your job is to know a little about a lot of things rather than a lot about a few things so if, if I'm not always able to go into detail it, it's hopefully hopefully I can give a sense of of what people are, are talking about with me and, and the, the general state of mind in, in the industry. Oh my goodness <laughs> well, and that's very it's incredibly valuable I think to your point right because there are quite a few people in this industry that, you know, know a lot about something very specific and, you mm. know, your ability to sort of zoom out and look at the forest through the trees. I also love an analogy. So I apologize in advance. I love analogies too. Keep it up. <laughs> okay. Well, see, now we're cooking. Um, but you bring up a really, really good point, right? And I think there is a little bit of a misnomer, right? And also sometimes people, I do think, confuse the issue, right? Which is just like, no, regulations have to be bad. They cannot be good, right? Mm -hmm. um, or we're against them. And I think what you're saying is that like, we're for regulations that seem fair and proportional to the regulations that are already put on other industries in the business. Yeah, I, so I think and we work closely with, with some of the um, advocacy organizations um, within the industry and we love to see um, the, the strength of these industry um, organizations coming together whether that's hosting events and having regulation highlighted um, prominently on, on panels uh, um, I was lucky enough to be um, in on a recording of uh, Matt, uh, one of Matt Landau's podcasts yes. um, at VRMA in Las Vegas and seeing what um, you know, they're doing with Dana from Rent Responsibly and um, you had Jay Jamie from Air DNA was there and, and these round tables and People, people have big voices um, in this industry as well. The growth of podcasts and different media. You see, ev everyone is kind of becoming content creators in their own right as well. And these, these voices, if we can unite everyone together, I think that's yeah. really for the, for the benefit of the whole um, industry. And, um, you know, there, there'll always be um, authorities, um, organisations who maybe want to slap um, more more stringent regulations on us, but I think if we can get in a, a healthy dialogue dialogue with them and really show the strength and the, the solidarity of of this whole industry, then we'll, we'll be in a better place for it. I love that. No, it's such a good point. Um, and yeah, major shout out to Matt and Matt Lando and Dana Lubner because they have done, I think, to your point, just that right, which is like, can we get organized around this? Yep. And we sort of have, instead of just like a couple of big voices talking about it, can we get sort of a resounding drum beat um, and bring things together? Because it, again, historically, that's been the challenge, right, for the industry is that we are so decentralized and like, okay, like is, you know, and so having a cause to unite us, I think one is great. And then having people like Rep Responsibly, Responsibly, um, you knew what I was trying to say. There. <laughs> I, I did. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, <laughs> having folks like rent responsibly dana sorry i promise i know how to say your company's name oh, is this getting out edited out no i'm keeping this part in you know, maybe i mean like i said we we edit only just a little 20 percent. 20 percent of this is edited listeners the rest of it is off the cuff <laughs> yeah it, it's um yeah again again i completely um go along with with with, with what you're saying as well then mariah because this industry um it is uh, what was it you're saying there it's a small big big world um mm -hmm. and you know i think what we're do, trying to do at short-term rentals as well 
you know, we, we have our, our website and we're covering news and we're doing different types of media as well. But with, with things like the, the awards that we're doing, the shorties as well, we really want to, you know, bring, I, I think it's great when there's opportunities to bring the whole industry together as well. And there's, you know, when I went across to VRMA um, International in October, it was fantastic to see so many people. And this is on a scale that I'd really never um, anticipated as well. Right. Um, there was no chance of being able to speak to everyone there, but um, you know, and we've got the the short stay summit, which is probably our closest equivalent here in the um, here in the UK. But um, you know, with our awards, when we're able to collect entries from literally, we've had Australia, New Zealand, Love. South America, um, US, and get everyone together to you know really celebrate achievement or recognize the contributions that people are making um you know, i think this is a really good industry to be in yeah that's huge and i think it is so nice to take a minute right to to celebrate that and sort of have bring more awareness to you know folks that are doing really great work in the business in, in several different categories i think what's great about the shorties is it probably covers nearly every topic possible I mean, I mean i think so I mean, we're up to we're up to 20 <laughs> categories and we still have people suggesting different things and um you know at some point we are going to just have to cut it off and and, and that will be that but there's we've always kind of got to follow the market and yeah. if there are if there are interesting trends developing like for example we had um and I know this is also relevant to you, but we have a Rentalpreneur Award for the first time. Yes. And I mean, our awards are always about being as inclusive and diverse as possible. And, and this was a segment that we saw there probably wasn't enough um, emphasis being, being placed on these um, you know, traditional hosts, uh, essentially. They're not the big property managers, but they are hosts in their own right and they're renting out properties and they might be scaling their portfolios uh, and, and they're a big part of this this industry as well so um you know we're delighted to, to bring in that award for the first time i love i love 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 this because i think that was one of the things that really sort of struck me again it's sort of being a little bit i mean what's interesting about i think both you and i and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> we're not we're not actually like i don't have a short-term rental property right now like part of the reason i'm doing this podcast is because i want everyone to tell me how to do it so i can do it <laughs> well you're doing a smashing job <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you uh, but like you know as a consequence of that we have a little less skin in the game so to speak so what was so interesting to me you know in full transparency and again i'm not trying to be controversial but but sort of the very much like the division right um, that sometimes feels like it gets over highlighted in the business and maybe because it's provocative between like, oh, what's a rentalpreneur or like an individual host versus like a property manager or a vacation rental manager. And like, you know, because um, and, and rightfully so, maybe there's a lot of people out there that say, look, before Airbnb was a thing, I was doing this. Like, this isn't yeah. a new thing. Absolutely, Airbnb is yeah. not the new thing. Um, however, Airbnb has done an amazing job of bringing, you know, that that type of business, our business, into the mainstream. Mm. And they've done an incredible job, hopefully providing folks with an opportunity for upward mobility as a consequence. And they've provided a bunch of travelers um, with alternative options, to your point. Mm. So I love this idea of like, let's bring ourselves together. Let's celebrate both sides of that fence, which I think is where you were you're, yeah. you um, headed with that, I, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, totally. I, I mean, as as a journalist, I, I've got to be impartial on on these these different matters. But nevertheless, you you do see, um, you know, rightly or wrongly, maybe some some Airbnb bashing at times, and um, you know, um, and, and perhaps some of that is, there there is some merit. But um, this and, and of course, this isn't an industry that just started in in two thousand eight when right. Airbnb started to to launch up, but. I think at, at the same time, whether you agree with everything, every decision that they're making along the way, this is still an industry that has really accelerated just in the last couple of years. Um, I've been in this now coming up to coming up to five years, and 
um, you know, product launches. I, I think, mm. I think whatever anyone would say as well is, if there's one person you listen to in this industry, um, forget short term rentals for a minute, but <laughs> Brian Chesky on on right. Twitter or any communication channel, he he is always ahead of the game with the with the latest trends and with the um, the real innovations within the sector as well. Um, and um, I mean, even he's to some extent now a rental preneur. He's he's hosting yeah. people within his own home. Yeah, as he's well. back so, in the biz. Yeah, and and um, encouraging digital nomads to travel around and, and stay in different Airbnb listings. But um, yeah, whether whether you agree or not, Airbnb has this huge marketing and PR machine. Uh, what I what I want to do is like sort of I'll bring it in. So because yep. you're giving me so Paul, what I love 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 about what you're saying right now is I'm I'm getting this sort of thread like I'm starting to connect some dots here. And what is really, really interesting about all the things we're talking about, which is technology, right? Um, regulation and, you know, Airbnb. And like the reality of those, all three of those are, those are outstanding factors that a lot of people in this business may or may not have control over, mm, right? Yeah. Like those are things that are happening, can feel like they're happening to us as people operating in this industry. Um, and what's, what's sort of like what's striking me at the moment is that like you can either sort of try to ignore them or try to bash them and try not to get involved in them, or you can embrace that there's a change of coming and evolve along with them, right? Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was um, in, in Vegas, wasn't it? We were talking about the Air, Airbnb, what, what was it, Airbnb bash? Um, yes. Airbnb. Airbnb bust. Airbnb, Airbnb, Airbnb bus, yes, bus, which, exactly. You know, Jamie and I are rebranding it. It's Airbnb. Really? Airbnb. Was, was, the, was the Airbnb bust originally your your no. word? Your term? no, no. I mean, I know the Twitter handle, but we're not going to call it. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It, it, it's um, you. Know, it's an industry that Air, Airbnb has, whether we like it or not, played a part in in the growth and the awareness of the industry. And you know, separately, sort of the um, the regulatory i think the scrutiny on, on this industry and right rightly so there should be scrutiny with, with any industry or business um but um it, it has maybe um helped other booking platforms yeah. or other other hosts other rental entrepreneurs who wanted to scale portfolio they can look at the success that airbnb has had and maybe they can take learnings from it, or maybe they Absolutely. they can take take it their own route as well. And every, everyone has their own business model and their own direction that they want to go in. So, um, yeah, I th hopefully that's the impartial answer I can give you. <laughs> I like it. I know you were like, don't try to bait me into a non-impartial <laughs> answer. It's, here. it's usually me trying to, well, maybe not bait, but uh, provoke. Yes, the... <laughs> a big man with the right words. Um, I know. <laughs> again, Paul, you're doing such a great job. Again, now you're going to have so much more empathy next time you interview someone. You're going to be like, oh, I see how this is. Um, so I, I also hopefully am playing fair. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> I want to I pull more on the thread of the technology because I, so one, selfishly, I'm like, OK, so you did this amazing webinar. And what, what is it? Where are we going? What's, what's the answer? What are people looking for in terms of data and technology? Webinar we were doing on, yes, it was, it was Tuesday, and we called it um, Data with Destiny, predicting Ooh, the future of our industry. So I, I, I mean, I love these. <laughs> this is one of the best parts of webinars. You have complete control over titles. But um, <laughs> I, th I think Data with Destiny is, is such a, it a, sort of hits exactly where the, the, the sweet spot of where we were trying to get because yeah. companies, um, I mean, everyone relies on data at the end of the day in, in, in this industry as well. And people are maybe just looking at, you know, what is the data that we need? How can we deploy this as efficiently um, as possible? Um, we had um, home to go as well, like a meta search oh, company yeah. based out of Germany as well. And they were providing some some really fascinating insights on how they're providing a more personalized curated selection of 
the vacation rentals around the world. So it's it's very much there's all this data around how are you scraping, how are you extracting the most important data, not just not just sort of in general, but the most important data to you. Um, maybe that's on hyper hyper local market data for you, or maybe that's informing companies where they're going to expand their portfolios to or whether it's um, investment firms whether they're going to invest so it's um it's a really fascinating um vertical and something that i'm learning about but it, data is always something that's going to be around and it's going to keep developing so um we'll, we'll certainly be tracking it i love this well all right well i'm going to go back and listen to the webinar hopefully it's on demand <laughs> somewhere it is it is i'll send okay. it to you after <laughs> all right we'll put it we're going to put it in the show notes too um i i think that that's a really interesting point that you bring up right which is that you know and, and, and generally just when an, in, an industry is in its sort of like infancy teenage years right like there is so much tech out there. There's so much data out there and it is really hard to understand, okay, like, is this useful technology? Is this useful data? Um, but I, I expect that that will sort of change as time goes on and sort of, again, at the Shorties Awards, the winners will come rise to the top. Um, well, Paul, I, again, totally allowed to do shameless plugs on this podcast. <laughs> you have some really exciting things happening in 2023 um, and we just talked about COVID and, and virtual things, but these are IRL in real life events that yeah. are happening. Talk to me because you've just partnered up with Skift, yes? Yeah, I mean, the, the next couple of months in our, our calendar, I know there's so many events happening, it seems, but we've got some, we had some really exciting announcements um, over the last Love couple it. of weeks. I mean, firstly, I'm, I'm not sure exactly when this episode is coming out, but in only a couple of weeks' time, we'll, we'll be hosting the uh, the Shorties Awards again. Uh, delighted to be back in person, and we're actually doing it. Um, we always find a unique venue to do it as well. So we've we've picked um, the Orbit, which is um, designed by Anish Kapoor as well, um, and it's this big twisty sculpture outside um, the what was the Olympic Stadium for twenty twelve, um, and fantastic views overlooking London as well so we think it's the perfect venue for this type of event and we, and we really like that unique and quite casual vibe of this particular awards yeah. um we'll be there and, don't worry oh yes well Eddie and I are a sponsor as well so mm -hmm. we're, again we're really grateful for the for the support for that uh, and on on top of that as well we've um announced just in the last couple of weeks that we partnered with Skift as well Skift is a publication that probably all, all or um, we'll put all, it in the show the, notes if you don't know about it. <laughs> all, all, all of your listeners uh, and viewers, I'm sure, are aware of, of Skift and, and the work that they're doing. And we um, partnered with them for two events this year. Um, in June, they're hosting the Skift Short Term Rental Summit. I know some speakers are, are still being confirmed for that. Um, Skift are doing most of the work for this one, but we are um, partnering in terms of moderating and we'll be doing some interviews there as well. So it feels like a big milestone to be able to announce this and really connect with some of the, the big leaders um, across the across the states. And there'll be people coming across from, from Europe and elsewhere too. And then on top of that, we are going to be hosting our own inaugural summit in, in November as well. So um, we've already got a prospective agenda out there. We've deliberately timed it as well um, to be the last day of World Travel Market, WTM, in Love London. That. So we're really going to, um, sort of, you're going to have these converging audiences, maybe not solely in short-term rentals, but wider hospitality and travel. Um, and I think it's just a really exciting development as well. So um, we're looking forward to, um, you know, presenting this this new event in partnership with Skift, um, sharing insights, um, editorial expertise, and um, yeah, we'll encourage people to book tickets in the meantime and hope to see lots of you there in person as well. I love this. Well, you know we'll be there. Um, and this is very, very exciting. And I love the last one, right? Like it just encourages us to go a little bit beyond our four walls, right? Like Absolutely. Zip up, it bringing a few industries together. I, I don't know what you feel like. 
it's we we saw each other as I said at, at VRMA, but like COVID and 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 lockdowns, is still doing the podcasts and and Zooms etc. But it feels like such a long time ago, and that that human bond and 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 that that in person element is we have maybe a, a newly learnt appreciation of that and the real benefit of you know whether that's being there in the conference center and talking about products or news or whether you're just in the bar so it's just having a drink or something it's that's really important 100 percent. yeah no it's a game changer uh definitely to go to these events and be able to meet people in person and like you said probably see people that you've talked to before virtually or emailed or you know followed on twitter and then meet them in real <laughs> life and Confirm that they're not avatars in your imagination. Absolutely. We're not all quite in, not all fully in the metaverse yet. (laughs) I can't predict the future, but. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Paul, I've had so much fun talking to you today. Um, We will, we'll get this podcast out before the shorties so that everyone can hear about it. Um, And we're super, super excited to be joining you there in just a short, few short weeks, days, whoever, you know, time. We're in the metaverse. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> the time I think the time is going to go by very quickly but yeah really echo what, what you say Mariah really thank you very much for having us on, on the podcast and look forward to seeing you and, and lots of other industry people um, at the awards or at the um, summits of Skift and um, please do approach us as well we're happy to discuss anything related to the industry. <laughs>